Hi again then folks and welcome to day four already. We are as always motoring through these special projects builds, this time one of the probably more obscure cars compared to some of the others in the pack, a vehicle which I found while just looking through various McGann liveries to look for some inspiration, checked out the car online, I liked what I saw, so I thought let's go for it. It is of course the McGann N4, a more rally based version of the Megan. Not quite full on WRC machine, but a nice little build. I, I think for many of us, the Megan's probably one of those cars that you've got at least one or two of in your garage, probably not doing much. So, if nothing else, it might encourage you to use the Megan a bit more or have something at least to do with it. As you can see, the point level is similar to the Evo rally car that I did in this pack as well. The power isn't too far off, the weight is considerably lower. Obviously you have the disadvantage here of front wheel drive, and I did spend most of my time tuning it to overcome that disadvantage, so you'll have to see in a second of course what I've done. I've gone for the sports air filter, and obviously with 266 horses it's not that much different to standard. You want your stage 1 weight, comes with the hard tyres of course as standard, but I've got dirt ones naturally. As far as the rest, we've got the stage 2 weight as well. You do want your ballast fitted, the dirt tyres naturally fitted as I said. As far as the rest, you want your fully customised diff. Again, I have opted for the rigidity. You don't necessarily have to, but I have. I'll leave it down to you. Stage 3 weight as well. As far as the racing stuff, anti-lag does help in a car that has front-wheel drive, make up for some of that disadvantage. Once again, of course, with the brakes, you want your pads and discs. I say it, you know, every time, but just for those who are new, doesn't really matter which brakes you go for, as long as it's drilled, slotted, or carbon ceramic. Any of them will do. As far as the suspension, the transmission, and the clutch and flywheel, all purchased here, as you can see. And then for the extreme section, being a rally-based build, of course, we've got the steering angle adapter and the hydraulic handbrake, just to give you a little bit more maneuverability as far as a rally vehicle goes. Of course, I will have already flashed up on screen the name of the player who created the design. There is a link in the description, as always, to add it to your library if you would like to use this particular one. It's quite a simple livery to go for, but quite a nice-looking car. So, as far as the tuning, for the suspension, first of all, we've increased the ride height to 155mm. We've got 4 on anti-roll, 35 for the dampers on compression, 40 for the rebound, 2.15 on the frequency. As far as the camber, 1.5 degrees on the front. I've opted for none on the back. The toe is zero on the front and quite a lot on the rear. It's towed out by 0.50. So a huge amount of tow, and under most circumstances, you would never want to do that to uh, any kind of road racing machine, or even most rally cars, you wouldn't really. The reason why I've opted for that, though, is obviously when you've got the, the tyres towed out, especially on the back, it really encourages the car to be super tail happy. And the reason why I've gone for that is because with a front-wheel drive car, they are naturally very much the opposite. They have a very heavy steering personality, generally speaking at least, and that equates to much, much slower cornering. So to combat that, I wanted to have the rear end much more slip slidey, so that without slamming on the handbrake all the time, you can kick the tail out, even with the front wheel drive, and get it to flow through corners a bit more nicely. As far as the diff, this won't necessarily suit everyone, but I've gone for the highest on all three. Give it a try, see what you think. For the transmission, we've got an auto setting of 240 kilometers an hour. That's probably higher than you need, really. You could probably get away with 210, 220 even, but I'll leave it down to you. As far as the ballast, a little bit, just to get us up to the real world numbers of 1100 kilos, 19 kilos added, and I've put that all the way to the back. Again, you could make the argument you could put it over the front instead and have the back end swinging around even more. I'll leave that down to you though. As far as the ECU, that is of course standard, downforce is untouched. Anti lag, I have of course got set on strong. What's the point of having it if you're not going to make full use of it, really? As far as the rest, of course, you can see all the stuff we've fitted all over here, and of course, all that remains is to jump out on the dirt and show you what it can do in practice. Now, of course, a vehicle like this is going to have disadvantages compared to most, even, <laughs> other rally cars in the game or even road-going rally builds, just being front-wheel drive alone. I mean, for those who have been watching my reviews on the channel for many years, as far back as the Gran Turismo 6 days, you'll probably remember that I, as much as I liked vehicles like the Citroen Zara rally car, it just felt like it had such a disadvantage to me with that front-wheel drive. You just couldn't get the power down. It's not as bad now, and if you give this tune a try, I would recommend, as with pretty much any rally build, especially a lesser powered one, first of all, make full use of the manual gearbox. I prefer automatic, but I do use manual a lot for rallying because you just need that extra control, because sometimes an automatic 
will just change at totally the wrong time and completely bog you down even with anti-lag and in terms of getting the best out of this car for maneuverability you really do want to be making use of that drifting handbrake because the beauty of a front wheel drive car is you can pull on the handbrake but also keep the car on full throttle and of course because the front wheels are being driven you're braking the rear wheels so it has the same effect of having the toe out you can swing out that back end keep power going to the front end and use the handbrake to actually help the steering of the car because it operates in a totally different way to a four-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive car and of course it's the same principle effectively as when you'll see boy racers in little front-wheel drive hatchbacks putting dinner trays under their rear tires so they can slip slide around it's exactly the same principle and it really really helps maneuverability especially on something like a hairpin turn such as here because having that extra level of maneuverability, pulling on that handbrake, swinging the back end around, makes a huge difference. So of course, if you do decide to use it, I'm not going to claim it's the quickest thing around. It's something different. It makes use of the Megan for those of us who don't use it that much. It certainly isn't slow. It is an alternative style of rallying. And if by some you know, magical occurrence you happen to need a front-wheel drive rally machine of this kind of level, then I guess you've got one now. So if you do decide to use it, give me some feedback as to whether or not you enjoyed it. Maybe some additional accoutrement that you put on there to make it even better. Of course, check out the other builds from Pack 4 that we've already done and stick around for tomorrow wherein we will already be on the last day of pack number four but give the creator of the design some love of course from me and until next time i'll see you then but for now as always thanks for watching